Hi, I'm Doug the Bee Guy and welcome to the Queen Rearing Series. In this video, we're going to build the four-way mating nucleus. Now let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do to make the four-way mating nuke, um, and this is it right here, and the first thing that I do is I start with the commercially made box. And I make some cuts with the dado blade, and I'm going to show you that right now. So what you're going to want to do is start with your commercial box. You have two short sides and two long sides. And on the two long sides, you're going to take your dado blade and make a 3 8 inch groove in the center. And on the two short sides, you're going to take your dado blade and cut a quarter inch groove in the center. And what that uh, creates is the box that I just showed you right here. It creates the, uh, the groove here on the long side, which is a 3 8 inch, and the groove here on the short side, which is the quarter inch. And so that allows you to do the uh, four quadrants. And that's the first thing that we're going to do. And you need to do that before you put the box together. So now we have our dado blade, which is a quarter inch. And we have our two pieces uh, marked. And you want to make this groove uh, three eighths of an inch deep, which is basically the depth of your frame rest here. You want this board to go all the way um, to this other piece because that keeps the bees from going between there. If you, if you just make a little tiny groove, then you'll have a little walkway and the bees can sneak through there. Um, it's usually not big enough for the queen and I've done that before by accident, but just for completion's sake and to do it right, you should make sure that groove goes all the way down to the to this depth, which is 3 8 inch. All right, let's cut those. I'm lining it up with the line that I have on the very top. Okay, now we're going to cut uh, the 3 8 inch uh, dado grooves, and these are also 3 8 inch deep. This one is not necessarily critical because uh, it's not going to uh, affect how close the board goes to this because the other boards are going to touch that. But 3 8 of an inch deep is fine. Got my line on the top for a gauge. We've changed our dado blade to 3 8 inch. Line it up.
there's the uh, fourth piece. You may have noticed this little uh, hole that gets put in when you uh, go through the handle. If you have, uh, if the boxes that you bought have handles, um, that will get covered when you put that board in. It gets sealed, so it's not, it's not a problem. That's not going to be an extra opening where you don't want it. So the next thing to do is to take your uh, two long sides and two short sides that have uh, the dado cuts in them and assemble them into the hive body. Okay, so we've taken our uh, four pieces and assembled them into the hive body. I didn't show this process. Um, basically all you do is uh, nail the pre-made boards together and glue them and hopefully you'll be able to do that without seeing it. If not, I'm sure there are plenty of videos out there that will show you how to do that step. So that's all we did. We uh, completely assembled that and now it's time to make the inserts for the four-way mating nuke. All right, so now we're gonna take some uh, 3 8 inch plywood and cut down some uh, some pieces that are uh, 9 and 5 8 high by whatever the width is that you measured, um, depending on how deep your grooves are. I'll put that measurement up there. But that's kind of what we're gonna do now. We're gonna rip some of those pieces. Now you want to uh, cut this uh, 9 and 5 8 inch piece to uh, length and I just marked them out there instead of resetting the fence and gonna buzz them off. Now that you have your uh, pieces cut, you want to test fit them to make sure that they're all going to fit before you uh, glue and staple them together. We're going to make a sandwich, put a little wood glue on there and staple them with some pneumatic staples. And then we can pull this whole thing out and uh, cut a quarter inch uh, groove down the center of it that matches this quarter inch groove on the side of our box. And that's the next step. All right, so now we're going to uh, staple these two boards in and I'm going to uh, put some glue on this. kind of make a sandwich. I'm going to put this uh, bad part to the inside there. And just press it up against there like that. And I have some 5 8 inch staples in here. I'm just going to tack it in a couple places. Remember not to uh, put staples down your center because you're going to take your saw and rip a, rip a quarter inch groove in there. So uh, I just tacked it on the top. My uh, tool is too big to go down in there so once I got tacked I'll pull it out and finish the job. The side is the same. 
Give it some glue. I don't even know if you need the glue, but I like to make things secure so I don't have to mess with them again once I make them. They're done. So again, I'll put uh, four staples across the top here just to secure that. And now we can pull the sandwich out and uh, finish it off. These are 5 8 inch staples, so they're going through the 3 8 plywood into the uh, middle piece, but they're not so long that they're going to go through the, uh, through the whole sandwich and out the other side. So there you go, you have a completed uh, insert, slide it back in with a nice frame rest. Now you can attach this with some staples, just like the staples I'm using, with some glue to make it permanent, or you can leave it like this so that you can take this out and your dividers and then you can use this as a 10 frame deep if you run short or you decide you don't want to do this anymore or you don't want to use this maybe you made too many that's kind of how i do it i leave these free nothing's gonna mess with that it's fine um and uh like i said the next step is going to be taking this out and putting our groove down the center so that we can make our final pieces and this unit will be done and ready for frames So if you remember, when we made these sandwiches, we're gonna cut right down the center here. And you see there's no staples. The staples are here and there. So that's just another thing to remember. Same thing on the other side. No staples in the center. All right. Let's cut another one here. Now that we have our centerpiece completed, we want to measure from this groove to this groove to see what that distance is so we can cut our little boards. And all the way from this inside of this frame rest to the inside of this frame rest is nine and three eighths. But this groove on this side wasn't cut all the way to the frame rest, so you want to take that into consideration. So basically, you have to measure, I would do nine and a quarter would be tight. I would probably do nine and an eighth or nine and three sixteenths would probably be just perfect. So that's probably what I'm going to set it at, nine and three sixteenths. And because you want these things to slide in and out um, fairly easily, as long as they're inside that groove, um, the bees can't get around it, which is what you want, and you want to make sure it's the right height. You want it to be 9 and 5 eighths, just like everything else. 
that comes to the top of the box. And uh, in the fall, we're going to take this out, and then these bees will share this side. Um, that's usually what I do. I end up with two. So you'll use some queens. Maybe you'll have one or two fail, and you'll end up in August or so with that configuration. We'll take this out, and then you'll have two um, side by side little overwintered queen boxes. All right, so let's make those pieces. So I've got my uh, distance here set to nine and five eighths, and I'm going to cut the uh, boards for the inserts. And I'm going to do two different kinds of material. I'm going to use quarter inch plywood and also eighth inch pegboard, the pegboard stuff, whatever that's called, without the holes in it. So I use both. Um, just depends on what my uh, big box store has. They don't always have the quarter inch plywood um, in the small sheets that I like. I like a two by four sheet or a four by four sheet that I can just throw into my car and I don't have to get the truck and then it's a pain to cut the big board down. So I like these smaller pieces for these kind of projects. So if they don't have the quarter inch plywood, I use this board and it works just fine. So we're going to cut some of those and show you how to insert them. If you're at all unsure of your measurement, it's always a good idea to check it. I am five ace, right on the money. And that's what you're looking for. So now we have our two different materials. One is an eighth inch thick and one is a quarter inch thick. So now that they're nine and five eighths inches deep, we need to uh, measure the length and cut it at, remember what it was, it was nine and three sixteenths for our particular boxes. Cut these. And so each one of these pieces will make two pieces with a little scrap left and that will complete our hive. Each one will complete a hive. So now we just need to do the redo the fence for nine and three sixteenths and cut those pieces. Alright, so we have our fence set, 9 and 3 sixteenths. So here we are with our finished box. On this side we've inserted the quarter inch plywood, but it's a pretty tight fit. And uh, I'll show you on this other side. I'll put a piece in. See, it's pretty tight because a lot of times this stuff has a bow in it and uh, those grooves are exactly quarter inch and this stuff is probably a quarter inch and it may have swollen with some moisture. And so I've run that piece through a couple of times and you could probably get it out in the fall. But the problem is you might have to take out a bunch of frames to get your hand down in there. And, and sometimes when I do this, it's at the very end of the fall when the weather's not great. And I just want to be able to reach in there and pull that out and maybe readjust the frame. So this eighth inch material I find is a little easier. Now your bees are going to propolize those little gaps and they'll still be hard, but you can actually grab onto that and get that out of there. Even with it being propolized, it's not going to be... Uh, because of the heat of the bees, the propolis will be uh, soft in there. You'll be able to grab that out. So either way, if you want to use something a little thicker like the quarter inch material, maybe you want to make your grooves uh, 5 sixteenths instead of a quarter. 
Um, just to give yourself a little play. Like I said, this is pretty, pretty tight. This one I got in there and it's not coming out. So it's gonna have to be running and I'll probably have to use a hammer or something, but there's no way you could pull that one out. So, you know, just something to think about. Another thing is I'm not a cabinet maker, so I'm not, I don't have everything exact on this thing, but you can see you don't have to, as long as you have your four quadrants and you have this stuff level so that when you put the lid on, you keep the queens from going through. That's really all that matters. The bees are going to be happy in these quadrants. And once they have a laying queen, they don't seem to care that there's another hive just that close. And in the winter time, the whole point of this is that they'll share this heat and this cluster will be together. And we'll show you some videos of that a little later in this, uh, training. Thank you. Well, if you'd like to become a better beekeeper, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.